Today, I want to quickly review the new features and changes in Visual Studio 2022 update 17.6, which was released a few days ago. As with every update, we get better performance. This time, the focus was on opening and closing Visual Studio solutions for large projects. For example, the data in the What's New dialog of the Visual Studio update tells us statistics about the Chromium solution including 11,000 projects. Git history inside Visual Studio also got up to 42% faster. The all-in-one search got introduced in version 17.5 and was updated in 17.6 based on user feedback. Results take more vertical space and are easier to read. The window location and size are saved when you close and reopen Visual Studio. The default preview layout is set to bottom. Remember, the all-in-one search is still a preview feature. You need to enable it in the Visual Studio settings. Sticky scrolling allows you to see the method signature when dealing with large methods. You can enable it in the text editor settings in Visual Studio. I quickly tested it and I have to admit I don't like it so far. But I have to admit I usually don't work with large methods in my code and I'm maybe just not used to it yet. However, maybe it's a game changer for you. I've seen many developers using colorized brace pairs in Visual Studio code. It's now a new feature available in Visual Studio. However, I tested it and again, it's not for me. Maybe I just don't like it because I'm not used to it, but I like to have the same color for the same semantics and I don't see a reason why the same braces should have different colors. But again, it's personal preference and it might be a feature which is really helpful to you. I also noticed a small bug. When I enabled it in the Visual Studio settings, it was immediately activated. However, when I disabled it again, I had to restart Visual Studio to remove the colorized braces. You can now use the spell checker integrated in Visual Studio with every Visual Studio edition. I'm not quite sure, but I believe it was available exclusively for the Enterprise Edition before. But again, I'm not sure about it. It is one of the features I'm going to use from this new update. I don't like misspelled words in my source code and I don't think this feature eats up a lot of performance. With breakpoint groups, we can organize multiple breakpoints into a group and provide a custom name. It's a small helper tool that might be helpful when debugging large solutions or a complex problem. This feature is integrated in the breakpoints view and you cannot manually enable or disable it. The Visual Studio instrumentation now supports C++ and provides improved performance analysis. I'm not a C++ developer. Let me know in the comments if this new feature is a game changer for you. The .NET profiler now also supports live graphs for object allocations and CPU usage, as well as other statistics for .NET applications running on the Windows subsystem for Linux. Apparently, you can stage single lines using the internal Git tools in Visual Studio. You can now also unstage a single line of code. I haven't used the internal Visual Studio Git client, so I cannot judge this feature. We can now reference GitHub issues or pull requests using the hashtag or pound symbol. New features like this make me want to try the internal Git client. If you happen to use it or if you know if it's worth trying, please let me know and write it in the comments below. The last update regarding the internal Git client is that you can now commit or stage changes while a build is executing in the background. Again, this hasn't been an issue for me because I use an external Git client, but let me know in the comments if that's a deal changer for you. 
IntelliCode now offers an option to show your code examples for a specific method. It not only shows you the code, but it also tells you from what public GitHub repository the code was taken. I haven't tested it myself, but I believe it could be a very helpful feature. Let me know your experience in the comments below. The iEnumerable and dataset visualizers are now available when debugging.net, using Unix, SSH or on WSL. JavaScript and TypeScript syntax highlighting have been improved. However, I use Visual Studio Code for TypeScript and JavaScript development and I don't think I will change and switch to Visual Studio soon. However, if you're using Visual Studio to develop TypeScript or JavaScript, this update will be helpful to you. Besides the syntax highlighting update, you can now use CodeLens for JavaScript and TypeScript code in Visual Studio. Again, I believe Visual Studio Code has a similar feature and I will continue to use Visual Studio Code for TypeScript and JavaScript development. This update brings new quick fixes and code generation options for C++ code. Again, I'm not a C++ developer and cannot judge this feature. However, every feature that helps us write code faster is a good feature. You can now view Unreal Engine logs without leaving Visual Studio. If you're a game developer using the Unreal Engine, this might be a really helpful feature to you. If you're a game developer, let me know in the comments. Remember, since this feature is a preview feature, you have to enable it in the Visual Studio settings. High-level shading language is specific to DirectX development. With this update, a popular extension by Tim Jones is now part of Visual Studio. You can now use the Remote Explorer for Unix machines connected in the Connection Manager. You can browse, upload and download files from and to the connected machines. The new CMake debugger allows you to debug CMake lists.txt files within Visual Studio. You can now import STM32 Cube IDE projects for embedded development inside Visual Studio. The Android Manifest Editor is a visual tool that allows you to edit the Android Manifest for mobile apps. I'm sure it's very helpful because it provides some options using drop-down fields for information that you previously had to look up in the Android documentation. The tooling for ARM64 devices is now available for .NET MAUI development. ARM64 support is one of the community suggested features that made it into this 17.6 update for Visual Studio 2022. If you have any feedback or feature suggestions, use the link in the video description and let Microsoft know about them. Going through all of the new features inside this Visual Studio update makes me realize that Visual Studio is so much more than just a C-sharp IDE. As a .NET developer using C-sharp, I don't think about C, C++, TypeScript or JavaScript or embedded development inside Visual Studio. For me, this update isn't as valuable as the previous 17.5 update. But still, performance improvements are always great I like the new spell checker and the updates to the all-in-one search. I personally don't see a lot of value in the brace pair colorization, the sticky scrolling or the breakpoint grouping. However, those features might be helpful to other developers. Please let me know in the comments what feature you like the most. If you want to learn more about .NET development, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.